Okay, good evening everyone. Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. Before we start the meeting, we ask our city clerk to read the quote of the week, for the week. Thank you. Reputation is only a candle of wavering and uncertain flame and easily blown out, but it is the light by which the world looks for and finds merit. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. President Hanna, would you like to say a few words, sir? Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Reverend Martin Luther King inspired a nation largely through his speeches. And I wanted to share two quotes that have endured the test of time for me, both from 1963. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at time of challenge and controversy. The second quote is even more enduring. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, President Hanna. Call the 20th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren? Here. Bauk? Here. Gisha? Here. Hannah? Here. Heidemann? Here. Kittleson? Here. Clayunis? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Ryan? Here. Smith? Here. Vanderweel? Excuse. Verhasselt? Excuse. And Wangaman? Here. 14 present. <coughs> Quorum is present. Alderman Meyer, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes, President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move for the approval of the minutes. Second. Motion and second to approve minutes under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. <coughs> City County Shared Service Committee, Terry Katzma, Gary Maples, and Greg Wegeman <coughs> appointed 12108 expires 43009, signed by the mayor. I'd ask for a motion to suspend a point, uh, confirmation, the rules, I should say. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move that we suspend the rules for the confirmation. Second. Second, second to that. Is there any objection? <clears throat> All my running place. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, again, the question would be is there a, a uh, meeting that's it will be coming up in the next two weeks that we need to suspend to appoint these? members of the committee right away, or uh, is it something I can lie over for two weeks? There's a meeting on the 31st. It's, it's already on schedule for the uh, City County uh, Church Service Committee. Very good. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other objections? If there isn't any, I need a motion to uh, confirm. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to confirm. Second. Thank you. There's a motion and second to confirm. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Continue. Then uh, in the packet, there's a letter to the mayor from Susan Hart advising that she's withdrawing her uh, consideration from the HR position, HR director position. Need a motion to accept and file? Second. Motion and second to accept and file. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. One opposition. Alderman, who was that? Meyer. Motion carries. Please and continue. I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Susan Hart to be appointed as Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations commencing January 22, 08, and expiring January 21, 2013. And that appointment will be withdrawn pursuant to a request. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Next item on the agenda is a public forum. Madam City Clerk. Okay, first on the list is Henry Capitillo. And Henry, can you give me your home address, please? Yes, that uh, is 1619 North 38th Street, and that's in the uh, town of Sheboygan. Okay, you will have five minutes, sir. Okay, thank you. 
I would like to have come here today to talk to you about the increased drug problem in the city of Sheboygan and Sheboygan County. What I am going to talk to you about is the 2006 community block grant that the city of Sheboygan awarded to Home Inc. for the ele elevator replacement at the Superior Manor boarding house. I just want to let you know that as, as of today, two years later, we have still not received one penny of those contract funds. Although we have invoiced the city for $40,000, on two separate occasions, the first being in September of 2007, and then again on December of 2007. According to our contract, under page two, article five, it states, home shall be compensated for actual monthly costs incurred under, and also under article six, request for payment, it states, each request for reimbursement shall itemize the actual cost incurred it goes on to say that the city agrees to make payment each month within 15 days of the receipt of such request. Since we were unable to get the reimbursement for the $40,000, Home Inc. had to take out a loan for $40,000 in order to even get the project underway. Since I had a good idea that we were not going to have, that we were going to have a problem with our money from the city of Sheboygan because of how outspoken I am and coming to these city council meetings, I asked representatives from Otis Elevator to talk to Ms. Paulette Enders on the invoicing for the project. In addition, I asked the bank representative when we were taking out the loan to also talk to Ms. Paulette Enders in order to make sure that we would not have a problem getting reimbursement for the initial $40,000 down payment. It is my understanding that Ms. Enders told both individuals that we would not have a problem being reimbursed for the project funds. I also have a copy of the invoice that was sent to the city from Otis Elevator, which basically says that these costs incurred were engineering costs and ordering of equipment that we paid and which we paid the invoice for $40,000 from the loan that we secured. According to the Webster's National Dictionary, the meaning of incurred is as follows. Incurred, incurring, to become liable to, by one's own action, contract as a debt. So I'm pretty sure that when we signed the contract with o Otis Elevator to do the elevator replacement, we incurred a debt. That debt was for $140,000. We signed that contract with Otis on 5-1-2007. We pretty much requested the initial funds so that we could get the ball rolling on the replacement of our elevator. Since we were unable to get that money, again, I said we had to take out the loan. Had we known that we were going to have the problems with the city on getting our money, we wouldn't have taken out the loan for such a short period of time. We would have made it a long-term loan. But what ha what's happened now is that we're at it, we're at we're basically at a stalemate because we definitely need to be reimbursed for the $40,000. If we're not, we need to know how long it w will be before we can get reimbursed. In fact, the, letter that, the last letter that I received from the city basically says, on here, it says, we are in receipt of your letter dated December 10th, 2007. However, as stated in a letter that we dated August 22nd, 2007, the city of Sheboygan will only make progress payments on this project when materials are on site and can be verified in person. Therefore, if the down payment expenses at Home Inc. made for the elevator project includes materials for the elevator that have been delivered and can be inspected by me, please let me know. If the materials have not arrived on site, no payment will be authorized. Well, according to the contract, that basically doesn't say that. It says once we incur a cost, we will be reimbursed for that cost. It doesn't say that we have to have the equipment on site, that it has to be inspected before we get paid. All we're asking is that the city honor the contract that they have with us and basically saying that. Now, we do have a loan agreement with the city that basically does say this, that we will get progress payments and that we will have to have the city do on-site inspections. So those are two separate documents. One basically is a grant that we receive from the community block grant money. 
And that has nothing to do with the loan agreement. So according Excuse to... Me, Henry, would you like the additional minute? Yes. Okay. According to our contract, I would ask that uh, somebody look into the situation because basically we've already made two requests. We can't be going back and asking for, for money and being turned down because what happens is we need to know because we, we have a liability that with the bank and we need to let them know when we can pay them back their funds. And, you know, I have my suspicions of why this is going on, but, you know, this is not the place to be going into that. And all I'm requesting is that the city honor their contract, that we get reimbursed for the money, and we will, we will continue to work with, with Otis to get things and to make sure that uh, all the necessary paperwork is done by them to make sure that when they start doing the initial installation, that they provide the progress reports, the, uh, the uh, payroll records that are needed for, for their portion of it. That's why I asked uh, Mr. Barry Witt from Otis Elevator to basically call me, the Department of Development. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cabotillo, for uh, informing the council of the uh, uh, situation that you uh, that you have uh, before you. I, I wasn't aware that that's what's happening. If you would, uh, please call my office in the morning. I will uh, call a meeting with the proper city employees and sit down with you and see how we can straighten this uh, situation out. Uh, but I can assure you, it has nothing to do with you speaking before us at any point in time. In fact, I encourage it. Please keep doing it. Thank you. Uh, next on the list is Mike Vandersteen. Mr. Vandersteen, can you give me your home address, please? 320 Lincoln Avenue, also 2nd District Supervisor for Sheboygan County. Good evening, Council Members and Mayor. Um, when I signed up to speak uh, before you almost two weeks ago, I was hoping to uh, encourage you to consider a joint HR position with the county. This is something that uh, former Alderman Berg and I had brought up several years ago when there were vacancies in uh, one department or the other, and we took a, a quick look at it, but nothing much else happened, and I hope that more can happen uh, this time around. I was very encouraged to see that several members of this council had drawn up documents to sit down with the county to consider a joint HR department that would be a win-win for both the city and the county and the taxpayers that, that we all represent. I'm here to assure you that county government is open into exploring this matter with you. I've talked to Adam Payne and, and Don Schramm, and, uh, and they all have uh, given me the express a feeling that it's something that they feel they really want to look at and come up with something. The challenge is going to be to come up with that something that works for everyone. And, uh, you know, we, we had uh, gathered some materials. Uh, Eldon had from Brown County and Green Bay. They did this previously, and I understood that he turned this over to the new uh, first district alderman. And I don't know, Jim, if you still have those in your file or not, but they may give us a little bit of a roadmap on how to follow. But we also have to be careful because they're not doing it anymore. They discontinued this activity, and we have to find a way to, to, to make it hopefully a, an ongoing continued activity to last even longer. So thank you very much, and I hope you support the documents that are coming before you tonight. Thank you. And last would be Jeff Shuko. Mr. Shuko, can I have your home address, please? Yes, uh, certainly. 2411 D Camelot Boulevard. D Camelot. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Richards, Attorney McLean, Your Honor, Council Members, Citizens. I am here before you today, actually, in honor of my father. Uh, this has to do, and actually has nothing at all to do with the vast majority of our law enforcement in this community, not only in this community, but in this county. Most of these gentlemen, I feel, are upstanding citizens and patriots in carrying out their duties. However, as I had previously brought up at a former council meeting, 
there are apparently elements in the police department that are actually sidestepping our constitutional rights under the Second Amendment. Officer Williams of the Sheboygan Police Department, uh, I will quickly go through this again, had engaged in publicly declaring on WHBL that if the police receive a call concerning someone carrying a gun, if, if the police department answers that call, they will issue a disorderly conduct charge against the gun carrier even if the gun is carried legally. Now this policy is unenforceable under Wisconsin state statutes as I was informed by our state representative Van Akron. As far as Wisconsin state statutes go, and this is repeated over and over again in the Wisconsin state statutes. If a political subdivision has an effect on November 17, 1995, an ordinance or resolution that regulates the sale, purchase, transfer, ownership, use, keeping, possession, bearing, transportation, licensing, permitting, registration, or taxation of any firearm or part of a firearm, including ammunition and reloader components, and the ordinance or resolution is not the same as or similar to a state statute, the ordinance or resolution shall have no legal effect and the political subdivision, subdivision may not enforce the ordinance or resolution on or after November 18, 1995. Repeated again and again also in the Wisconsin state statutes is the phrase that these ordinances or resolution may be the same as or similar to and no more stringent than. Now that clearly means that law enforcement has no right to sidestep our state constitution. And the reason I brought up my father's, my father today and, and presenting this in memory of him is my job now requires me to travel up and down the lakeshore. I am working in a lot of areas where I'm exposed to dogs and we've all heard on the air about the pit bull attacks. And by the way, you have uh, quite a population of coyotes that are running throughout our drainage, around our drainage ponds now, and they're going after the migratory birds. I'm exposed to these dangers on a daily basis. My head cannot be on a pivot. Additionally, county officials and city law enforcement have told me that if I carry my gun unconcealed, which by the way, there are no state statutes covering whatsoever. Anything uh, construed as having to carry your gun with all the bullets out of the magazines, the clip has to be out of the gun, you can't have a round chambered in the gun, this is all unconstitutional. This renders that weapon absolutely useless. And this is something that they've been keeping from the public, is that we, the people in this country, are the supreme authority. The Constitution starts out by saying we, the people, not we, the legislators, not we, the law enforcement, not we, the governors. It's we, the people. The Second Amendment was made absolute in this regard because they were concerned primarily with abuses of power of this nature in the future. My father, who fought in World War II, along with many hundreds of thousands of other men, was on Liberty ships and he ended up going on a couple of convoys in the North Atlantic. These gentlemen were getting blown out of the water, their ships dropped to the bottom, all hands on board lost because of the weather conditions and the fact that they could not break the convoy formations. These gentlemen did not fight to, to, to preserve our constitutional and our Second Amendment rights, to have them trampled on by law enforcement. And I'm afraid this goes to the top in this state. Now, Officer Williams claims that the Sheboygan Police Department is going to so start citing people for this sort of thing. And I would ask that if he's going to start enforcing this kind of policy because we're Excuse carrying me, un Would you like your additional minute? I'm if sorry. If I may, just yes, to conclude. Go ahead. I would I would suggest that these uh, disorderly conduct citations for disturbing the peace be sent directly to Governor Doyle because he is the one that has put us in this situation. There are a number of things in the city ordinances that are in violation of our constitutional right to protect 
ourselves and bear arms. And uh, apparently since this, I've had my nose thumbed up at the request that I made for a public retraction in that regard, I'll have to demand that retraction now and demand that it be made on WHBL, in the Sheboygan Press, and in these council chambers on television. And I will, when I leave here tonight, stop at the desk and pick up papers to file a formal complaint. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, citizens. Thank you. That's it. Thank you all for speaking before the council tonight. Next item on the agenda is a consent agenda. President Hanna. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second, 20-1 uh, through 20-22, under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Kleunis? Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. And Wangaman? 14 Aye. ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 2023 and 2024 to be referred. Report of officers 2, 2025 and 2026. Lies over. 2027 through 2042 to be referred. Please make notation on 2031. That will also be referred to Board of Water Utility in addition to finance and public works. Please make that notation. Resolutions introduced three. 2043 by Alderman Gisha and Hannah directing the City of Sheboygan Salaries and Grievances Committee to meet and discuss the possibility of combining the City Human Resources Department with Sheboygan County's Human Resources Department with the proper Sheboygan County officials. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Your Honor, this is uh, in somewhat in response to uh, uh, to what uh, Supervisor Vandersteen mentioned earlier. Uh, this is uh, hopefully read as uh, everything is on the table in this case, and we're hoping to get feedback and good discussion going both ways to um, uh, perhaps come to a uh, another opportunity. And uh, and in response to uh, Supervisor Vandersteen, I I think uh, those that I've spoken to in the city have an equal spirit of uh, cooperation in entering into these discussions. Thank you. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I wanted to publicly thank Supervisor <clears throat> for coming this evening uh, and being open to us working with so Supervisor Vanderstein. I appreciate him taking time out of the schedule. Thank you, President Hanna. Alderman Smith. Thank you, Your Honor. I just have one question. Will this meeting take place publicly where citizens could also attend just to hear the input? All, uh, well, all Magisha? Thank you. I would, I would defer, uh, but uh, I think it was every intention that absolutely, I think that's great. And if anybody has any other ideas, uh, certainly the committee, I'm not speaking on behalf of them, uh, usurping the authority of our chair, but, but uh, I think that's more than welcome. Thank you. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Of course, all the meetings will be open. The only time it would be a closed session is if we're talking about wages, that sort of thing that falls into the purview of, of closed. Otherwise, of course, open. Salary and Grievances Committee is a standing committee. It must post a notice of meetings and open to the public. Alderman Smith, that, you're welcome. Okay, any other discussion? There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 
2044, by Alderman Vanderweel, Kittleson, Ryan, and Smith, authorizing a fireworks display for the Orion Energy Systems Conference at South Pier near the Blue Harbor Resort and Conference Center. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move for suspension of the rules. There's a motion and a second to suspend. Is there any objection? There is none. Please proceed. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, suspension of the rules is due to the uh, uh, fireworks. This is for, for uh, Orion uh, Lighting Energy Systems. Orion Lighting uh, wants to do fireworks on January 26th. So obviously, in order to get this uh, resolution passed, we need to suspend the rules. Um, Bartolotta is going to run the fireworks for them. Uh, they have a $5 million insurance policy, and the city is indemnified in this of any wrongdoing. Um, the, uh, the, the reason that we, the, it has to be sponsored by the city, the resolution reads, so this, this is why it has to go through in resolution form. So I uh, move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Bauk. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd just like to commend uh, Kim Swisher. She's done a great job of organizing this very, very quickly. Uh, she's been communicative. The email's been flying. And she's been working with the city and with the uh, company that wants to come and bring their people and spend their money here in the town to make it happen. And so I just want to recognize her for that. Thank you. Alderman Clayness. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Just a question. Just a question. Is that going to be the same place of uh, Fourth of July? Fireworks would be on the pier, um, same area? Yes, yes, it will be on the pier, the same, same okay, area. Okay, hold on, hold on. Alderman Ryan, let me get you so people can hear you. Okay, now. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, it will be on the on the same pier area that it normally is. Uh, um, uh, Orion uh, Systems is also paying for fire and police protection for this event, so it's not costing the uh, taxpayers any money. Thank you. Any other discussion? There being none, please call roll. Bow. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heideman, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunis, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Smith, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. and Boren. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2045 lies over. 2046 through 2049 to be referred. Report of committees 5-2050. By finance, recommending filing documents, submitting a communication from the Sheboygan Boxing Club, requesting that the city donate 400 chairs to the club to be used at their events and for use at the club and approve the donation. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to refer this back to finance. We have additional information that we need to discuss at the committee. Is there a second to that? Second. There's a motion second to refer back to finance. Any other discussion? There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2051, by Public Works, recommending filing documents, submitting a communication from the Sheboygan Boxing Club, requesting the city donate 400 chairs to the club to be used at their events and for use at the club, and denying the request. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to accept. And the end of 2051, under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Reports of committees 6, 2052 by finance, recommending filing documents, submitting a memo from Chief Kirk to Mayor Perez regarding possible uses of the $250,000 in shared services <coughs> fund that is currently being held by Sheboygan County that was somehow tied to the purchase of land on 23rd Street for the new police department and stating that he is res responding to the mayor's recommendation that a list of possible ideas for the use of this money be presented and to amend the request to strike number one, the new ASS 400 and recommends funding of number two and three of the request for the MEG unit computers and the dive team boat, motor and equipment. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, time is of the essence on this because we have a February 7th deadline. Uh, so I would move that the uh, report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second to accept and adopt 2052 under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Gisha. Aye. Hanna. Aye. Heideman. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Smith. 
Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Balk? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2053 by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operators license number 7722 based on the applicant's failure to cooperate with the committee. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion is Alicia Sawicki here tonight. She's not here, Your Honor. Thank you. Please proceed. Uh, Ms. Sawicki had uh, two opportunities to appear before the committee, one by certified mail, and she did not appear, and it was a unanimous decision to uh, not grant the license because of her uh, lack of cooperation with the committee. Very well, thank you. Vice President Bourne, any other discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Clayunas? Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Bauk? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Report of committees 7. 2054 by the Mayor's International Committee recommending approving $500 for the People to People Exchange Committee that requested a contribution for the student exchange trip to St. Petersburg, Florida for four students from Esslingen, Germany. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second to accept and adopt. Under discussion. <laughs> Well, I, I, from what I understand, that this is something that we've been doing um, for a number of years, and uh, it's it's sort of a, a gesture of hospitality that we extend toward our foreign exchange students from Essling and, and also from Japan when the when the, the situation arises. So, right. thank you. Thank you, Alderman Kittleson. Any further discussion? Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, perhaps uh, Alderperson Kittleson uh, could answer. It's my understanding most of those funds come from the works of the committee in raising those funds versus general fund dollars. And maybe that would be, if you could verify that, I would appreciate it. Thank you, Alderman Gisha. Alderman Kittleson, would you like to uh, clarify Thank that? you, Your Honor. I guess I know that this money has been put aside for, for several years from, from the general fund, and that's what we are deferring to to use that. Um, we do do fundraising efforts in our committee, and those are used as well when our German visitors come here uh, or our, our uh, visitors from Japan. We do um, uh, many things with the, with the, the, the uh, people that come here as well, and so we do use that money. But this money has been there uh, used for that uh, express purpose. So, thanks. Thank you. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Smith. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. And Hannah. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2055. By law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operator's license number 7737 based on the applicant's record of violations related to the license activity and the applicant's pattern of repeat law breaking. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion is uh, Mike Bruno here tonight. It's not here, Your Honor. Thank you. Please proceed. Uh, Mr. Gruno did appear before the committee at our last meeting and after a, a rather lengthy discussion uh, based on his violations related to the license and a pattern of repeat law breaking, the committee voted uh, unanimously not to grant the license. What we do in many of these cases is that we recommend that the applicant, after a year's time of staying out of trouble, come back and reapply for the license and we'll take another look at it, but at this time we voted not to grant. Thank you. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Smith. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. And Heidemann. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. And moving along, we're doing pretty good. It's not may not be a long meeting after all. 2056 by Public Works, recommending filing resolution authorizing purchase of security cameras, systems for place in Sheridan and King Parks. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Motion and second. Under discussion. 
Um, under discussion, Your Honor, um, this has been an ongoing issue, getting the cameras at Sheridan Park and some of the other parks that really, really desperately need these cameras. But money is also a big issue right now, and hopefully in the near future we will have the funds to put cameras in because we really would like to get these out there. And I know you're a strong supporter of that, Alderman Meyer. Thank you. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I concur with Alderperson Meyer on this, that uh, these cameras are necessary, and when the funding does become available, we would like to bring this issue up again and uh, get these cameras in the parks. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Clayunas. Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Smith. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Gisha, aye. Hannah, aye. Heidemann, aye. and Kittleson. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinance is introduced 10, 2057, and 2058 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 1926, resolution number 1890708 by Alderman Hannah, Boren, Bout, Gisha, and Clayunas, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget, establishing revenue and appropriations for funds received by Junior Police Academy program, donation received for police programs, donations received for fire department, EMS standby, and appropriation for vacation and sick leave, severance, and individual cost centers. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. <coughs> there is none. Please call the roll. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Smith. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. And Clayunas. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1927, uh, resolution number 190708 by Alderman Hanna, Bout, uh, Bout, Boren, Gisha, and Clayunas, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget, establishing revenue and appropriations for Eastern Shores Library grant funds, received and appropriations for vacation severance from, from funds res reserved for severance payments. Wow, that's a mouthful. <laughs> President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Put 1927 upon its passage under discussion. There be a none. Please call the roll. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Smith. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. And Manny. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1933, General Ordinance Number 780708 by Alderman Montemayor, Meyer, Gisha, amending for the calendar year 2008, subsection, subsections of General Ordinance Number 141-9798, which adopted the revised City of Sheboygan Compensation Program for non-represented employees. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the General Ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this issue is a rather close call for me, so I was wondering if uh, Madam Chairman or a member her, of her committee could go over the background of this document and how they arrived at these decisions to do these raises. Okay. We will ask her in a minute. Thank you. President Hanna. Same question. Same, Thank you. Same uh, question. Okay. Alderman Montemayor. <coughs> Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I think Alderman Gisha can probably provide the answers to this. He worked very hard on this, and he does know how to explain it very well. Okay, we're going to defer to Alderman Gisha. <laughs> <laughs> make, Gary, no, make, sure the, make sure the camera's on him now. <laughs> now we're in a lot of trouble. Uh, it, taking a page from my fellow First District Alderman, uh, from an education point that he was always prone to, to do in this, these chambers, um, our, uh, our pay plan for non-reps is a Rube Goldberg situation. It is incredibly complicated. It is incredibly difficult to follow. I've read it four times myself, and I'm sure many of you have read it many times, and I still have difficulty figuring it out. Um, 
what it calls for is for a, a calculation based on three factors to determine the merit pay, or pardon me, the across the board pay increase for our non-representative. Those are our non-union city hall and other places employees, like confidential secretary for the fire chief, stuff like that. And there's a second component raised for non-represented employees, and that's called a merit pay raise. That, according to our current pay plan, is up to 3.5% per year. So our first calculation on the two sections of our non-represented pay plan comes up to 3.3%. The second is up to, based on how you've performed and, 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 and been rated by your, your supervisor and manager, is another up to 3.5%. Now, the, the, the math, math of that is pretty simple. That's 6.8% raise per year annually. And I think, and, and I welcome anybody else on our committee who has uh, thoughts and inputs if I'm mischaracterizing the committee's uh, temperament on this, please help me. But that, uh, that's a significant uh, raise. Um, and and I, I believe it was the temperament of the committee to, because of budget constraints, to be uh, not supporting of that. So we kind of went back and went to work. And I would like to thank uh, Susan Hart and all the department heads for working with, this, with me on this. Um, this is meant to be a temporary for 08 only bridge to get us to a new pay plan. Uh, this is my understanding it should have been discussed in August of last year. It didn't come up to us until December of this year. And then here's the pay plan that says you must. The word must is in there. So our compromise from the must is this. And this gives a 3.3%, that's that calculation thing, based on three factors uh, that's codified in the pay plan, and add, takes that three, up to 3.5% 3 merit pay bonus raise and removes it as a raise, but turns it into a one-time cash payout. So that 3.5%, up to 3.5%, doesn't compound over and over and over and over and over and over and over, again, 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 costing tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars. So what this is is, is again, a stopgap. The committee, and please anyone on the committee correct me, the Salary and Grievance Committee has committed to, to revamping our non-rep pay plan. We received some input already from the non-reps who were in attendance and from the department heads. Uh, we would like to do that before April. It's going to be a daunting, daunting task. We've already telegraphed that it should be more merit-based and have a more merit-based feel to it. This also uh, asks our non-reps to contribute an additional 2% to their, um, their uh, health insurance premium, thank you, which mirrors the current union contract. So um, uh, again, if there, anybody else in the committee, if I'm mischaracterizing, please uh, uh, correct me. But again, this is just for 08, much like a few years ago where I believe this body um, froze wages for the non-reps. That was just for that year. So this is hopefully going to be a bridge to get us there. If this was our final pay plan, if this was it, I wouldn't support it. I'm, I believe this is a, I didn't want to put, at least my feeling was, and I think the committee's feeling was, we didn't want to put our non-rep employees in a situation come here in December where it should have been talked about in August, and suddenly we're pulling the rug out from underneath them and saying, no, 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 it's going to take us till April to figure out how to pay you in 08. I didn't think that was particularly fair. Uh, they supported this, department heads supported this, and I thought it was a good compromise for the moment to allow the committee to do its work. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Gish. Alderman Tamayor, final word? Um, uh, thank you, Your Honor. Alderman Gish explained it very well. And the pay plan for the non-reps <coughs> is by code. The, we do have a code to follow, and we're not following exactly. We're making this compromise. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Bout, you're next. Thank you, Your Honor. I just have a couple of clarification questions. One is the 3.3%, was that arrived at? Uh, is that a, a cost of living adjustment? Is that, uh, how is that arrived at? You mean where the first time it originated? Where does, why is the number 3.3%? That's, that's been in place for, for quite a while. I, I, I would not know how to answer that question myself. Susan Hart is not here. But I believe it, it somehow, in some respect, reflected what generally considered to be the cost of living. 
is it, CP, is it always 3-3 or is it related to CPI or? I don't know. We'll, we'll, I okay. Or, yeah, please. Okay. Alderman Gish. Thank you, Mayor Perez. It's it's a um, a calculation on three factors. One is there's a listing of communities that are that were determined some time ago to be similar to the city of Sheboygan, and they poll those cities to determine based on wage categories what they're giving non reps and what their unions are getting. It's a, and so you take all those and you do an average. And then you take the second component, which is uh, based on the consumer price index for a s specific time period of the year. It's not a calendar. It's, it's like April to April. It's very weird. I don't understand why that was there, but that's part of that Rube Goldberg situation. So you take that number. And then the third component is what you currently gave your represented employees in your union contracts. So you have three separate numbers. You take all those numbers, shove them together, divide by three, and so yes, each year it can change. This year, it, again, as, as um, Alderperson Montemayor mentioned, that's in our code. Um, so to change it, that's why we have to do things like this. If we weren't doing something like this and we paid no attention to it, it would be a 6.8% raise for these non-reps. So yes, each year can be different. Yes, please do. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me get the mic. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Uh, and then, so the committee by April intends to undo that Rube Goldberg scheme and make it more palatable to the average Sheboyganite so they can understand why their neighbor who works for the city is eligible for a 6.8% pay raise. Is that what I am to understand by April that will be solved? Alderman Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Hopefully, Alderman Bauck. Hopefully. Um, this pay plan, which is a thick document, many pages, with lots of components to it, was created in 19, oh, I, I don't want to say the year because I don't know the year, and it was done by, um, we hired a consultant to do it. He took him a long time, or the company, the consulting firm, a long time to put it together, and I don't want to say the year 89 or 92, it, it was a while ago, but it was done by a consulting firm. Next we have Alderman Plaginas. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I have two questions. What is contained in the bonus check? Is it just this one-time check? Is it a full salary, that salary, uh, 3.5 added to that one week, sal two-week salary? What is in the bonus check? What are the components of that? Alderman Gisha, you want to take a whack at that? Yeah, I'll take a shot. Um, it is, again, it's up to 3.5%. So you might have some employees um, who were already uh, have had their performance evaluations done. They were due by December, I believe. So somebody could get 1% of their wage. So um, if they make $30,000, 1% of 30000 will be added to that check one time rather than the 3.5% compounding over generations. So it's 3.5% of the yearly wage. Correct. Not 3.5% of the... <coughs> Um, by, by monthly wage. Okay. Second question is, um, why do these employees, are they, why are they eligible for bonuses? Um, uh, union employees, I don't believe, are eligible for bonuses. Why are they? Is there some stipulation or ordinance or statute or something? I'm up again. Um, because there is no contractual union negotiated package makes them eligible to do different things with their wage and and uh, it's the whole point of having non-reps is some flexibility um, and they are in support of this um, they we have checked with Nancy Busslet how it affects um, the state employee pension fund and etc cetera, etc cetera, and there are no restrictions on doing this they aren't penalized in any way um, they're they're penalized by not getting up to a 3.5% raise that they would then get compounded year after year after year. So uh, I don't know if that answers your question. We can, I guess, is the point. Okay. We have our Vice President Board. <coughs> Thank you, Your Honor. I guess the reason I'm having trouble supporting this is that uh, 
the retired people in our community just got a 2.3% increase in their Social Security. Uh, I don't know of a private sector company in, in Sheboygan or probably in the state of Wisconsin that's getting a, uh, that's getting a potential 6.8% increase in wages. That's very, very difficult for me to support. Uh, also, uh, I'm wondering, Madam, uh, Madam Chairman, if you can assure the council that, it, that this is going to be dealt with before the next council because you're going to be putting a lot of work into this between now and April and I would hate to see it get carried over to a new committee. Uh, it's going to be a mess. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you again, Your Honor. Alderman Bourne, I can assure you that we will try. I don't promise anything. And Alderman uh, Clayunas, um, they, the non-reps will be getting that percentage increase based on those three components that Alderman Gisha was talking about. Then they also, by this code, are eligible for a merit raise. Now, Alderman Gisha pointed out to us that a merit raise then would be added on to their salary year after year after year. By not giving them a merit raise, but calling it a bonus, <clears throat> then they'll be eligible for up to that 3 point what percent of their merit raise, but we won't be calling it a merit raise this year. Because a merit raise would mean that it would be automatically added on to their salary. So the word bonus was put in there, so it's a one-time thing. But that again, that merit raise, um, ability to get a merit raise is also in the code. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, for background and comparable, it's important to note that what this really does is provide a comparable that union folks get in their steps. The non-reps have no steps. Thus, the secondary merit increase is an attempt to have some sort of parity with union folks because that um, extra percentage then is in place of the steps. People well understand this in the teaching profession. It's the same uh, principle in the police department, for instance. The longer you serve, the more you make. You simply don't get an inflation rate increase year by year by year by year. But your service and your seniority are represented, honored, valued, and uh, paid for. Thank you. Okay. We have one more. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So it's my understanding this is merely a stopgap measure for 2008 <coughs> uh, so that uh, things can be uh, sat down and uh, simplified in a way that it, uh, it's, it's easier to understand and probably... Uh, probably uh, makes a lot more sense uh, in the long term rather than handing out 7% annual raises uh, compounded. So I will support this as a, uh, as a, a one-year stopgap measure that we can sit down and, uh, and uh, hammer out a, uh, a, a long-term future. Thank you. Alderman Greenflash. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, sounds like it's been one complicated issue that, that uh, the committee's been working with. Um, and I thank them for their work um, in trying to wrap their hands around uh, this particular uh, section of employees that we have. Um, I certainly cannot support a 6.8% increase, which would be entitled uh, if, if we don't do anything. Uh, I still, and I'm very happy that they're increasing their, their uh, contributions to the premium payments by 2% as well. It's the right direction I think that we need to go. 7% uh, is still awfully on the low side when you compare it to the private industry. Uh, a 3.3 percent raise this year is awfully high when you compare that to the private industry. Even with um, um, merit evaluations done by supervisors, I think they're a wonderful tool uh, for motivation uh, in, in certainly again the private industry. Uh, but I have been in places myself where we've, we know the merits are coming up. We analyze, you know, we get analyzed by our, our supervisor, uh, and then at the end say, "Well, we had a tough year. You qualify for a raise. We have no money to give raises this year. Our apologies." Uh, and fortunately, you have to lump it, uh, that, that aspect. If there's no money, you can't give it out. I think we're at the point in time that, that we don't have the money. Um, and again, it's no disrespect to the employees who, who work very hard, um, but um, as Alderman Warren mentioned, the senior citizens on Social Security only got a 2.3% raise this year, and we're asking at least for a 3.3. Uh, so I will not support this, uh, only because I, I can't really support a, a raise this year. Uh, for someone that is not a non-union rep and has not been negotiated for a long contract as well. Uh, and it's not out of supporting a 6.8% instead. Um, I just think that, that our, our, our taxpayers are, are hitting their point they can't afford to pay anymore. So 
Uh, with all respect to the committee, I will vote no on this one. Alderman Bauk. Thank you, Your Honor. I, uh, I uh, echo what Alderman Ryan and Ryan Fleisch say. I would just like to add that uh, to our very hardworking city employees, it's important to understand that uh, the taxpayers, this is uh, an incredible burden on them. Uh, personnel costs are the uh, great share of what our, our budget is, and this is a chance to bring our personnel costs in line with what the, what the uh, commercial world would do. Someone getting a 6.8% raise uh, would be someone uh, in the commercial world that I'm used to is someone who would bring in tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars more profit to the company uh, is what you would have to do. And, and unfortunately, in, in public service, what we do is spend money. Uh, and so I would, I would think that someone being eligible for 6.8% in an environment where what you do is spend money instead of bring in money uh, would be, uh, is, is just untenable in the long run. And I applaud uh, the chairperson's uh, taking on this thing. Sounds like it's 20 years old or so. That's a great time to turn it upside down, shake it up, and do something very, very different that reflects our taxpayers' ability to pay in the future. Thank you, Your Honor. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just a question. I think many of us believe and value the, the principle of step rewarding tenure and time and knowledge in service to a business or a community. Um, however, there is, in fact, a limit at the top end of the scale, just like in the teaching profession. I believe we have such a limit for years of service, but I do want to ask that question directly. Is that the case? For instance, after 20 years, you're capped and all you uh, can receive is an inflation rate increase. That's the question. Alderman Wagaman. Thank you, Your Honor. I've uh, received a goodly number of phone calls on this. In fact, uh, today I had quite a conversation with the uh, president of the Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance, or Sheboygan Taxpayers Alliance, and they're a little bit upset and very much concerned about this. And as is Alderman Bourne, I have a difficult time supporting this because uh, there are uh, quite a few people in private industry that uh, don't come anywhere near this kind of a raise. And people ask, is it some kind of a reward to work for the city that you're giving these kind of raises? So. Uh, I would not be able to support this. Thank you. Okay. I know uh, Chief Kirk, you want to speak, but I'll call you in a minute here. We will take the alderman first. We got two more aldermen. Alderman Gisha, you're next. Thank you. Um, one more time, and I'm not going to say another word about it. I don't agree. I don't disagree with a word Alderperson Wangaman said, Alderperson Bauck. Go on around the room regarding our citizens' uh, reaction to a 6.8% raise. That's why we're doing this, is to put a, a stop in place and say this has to change. At the same time, because of government's failure to deal with this in August, I do think it's unfair to our employees to pull their rug out from under, under them in December and say, oh, by the way, uh, uh, oh, wait, we're going to figure out what we're going to do in 08 over the next eight months or six months or four months and make it all retroactive. It, it's our fault that this wasn't dealt with in August. And, and so I, I, I don't want to penalize our employees. It wasn't their fault. It's, it's also not their fault they, they, that these packages exist like this. Um, I, as, as I said, if this was the future of pay for non-rep employees in the, in the city of Sheboygan, I'd be voting no, too, but it's not. It's a way to uh, send a, a message and, to, and also to save the city money over the long term. Uh, the final package will look different than this, at least that's my hope. Um, but I would agree with that, and I had the same conversations with the, the same people um, that were discussed. And when I explained this to them, they were very comfortable with the fact that, that uh, it wasn't what they thought it was, because it's not. It's, uh, I think we all feel this way. 6.8% stinks. I'll take it. Anybody would take it. It can't happen. Our employees know it couldn't happen. That's why they kind of agreed to, su to support and in the spirit of this. And they know what's going to change. We told them. We told them even how it was probably going to end up looking. We told them. They want to work hand in hand with us on it. So um, that's my final word. I'm sick of hearing myself on this issue. <laughs> Thank you. And I have allowed. Uh, Alderman speak more than twice. This is a good example why the, the rule sits in place. We've been at it for th almost 30 minutes, so, but 
This is an important issue, and I would encourage you that when this gets discussed in, in uh, the committee again, please uh, try to attend, because this will be make good, some good uh, discussions. We have Alderman Ryan, and then we have Alderman Hanna. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. My question is, if this is not passed, what is the, uh, what, what is the option? Do we revert back to what was on the books, um, where all of a sudden we are giving a true 6.8% uh, pay raise that will be compounded? If that's the case, we would be foolish not to support this compromise for this one-year period. Thank you. Okay. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I agree with Alderman Ryan um, that if, the, if we default back to what exists now, it's, it's a worse situation. Uh, this is a compromise, and uh, I hope you can assure us that Alderman Gisha remains on that committee next year. It seems like he's doing marvelous job. <laughs> you really want to punish him, don't you? <laughs> One more. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, being a committee member, this was a very contentious issue. We had almost every department head attend the meetings, and I wish more of the aldermen would have attended the meetings because they would have understood what we're trying to do. This pay plan has been in place. It has not been honored by other councils. We are trying to fix this, and yes, it does seem like a lot of money, but the department heads do have this budgeted already. These people have been promised these wage increases and these merit raises, which will be a bonus this year. And I think it's wrong for us to now, at the last minute, again, say, no, we have to go back and look at this some more. These people have been waiting. Um, I think it's only fair to give them this increase right now and then work on the problem and fix it for the next year. And I'll just have a final word here. Of it's, it's a good discussion to have, and I believe that there was even talk, uh, I may be wrong, but I believe there was even talk about changing the policy and the code as it stands now. When that happened, we had uh, the department heads and unreps that were concerned because that meant it could be zero, it could be one, it could be two, it could be anything. The compromise was don't change it at mid-year, don't, or don't change it now because it's already in place. This is what they're legally entitled to based on our policies and our code as it stands now. This is what they're entitled to. But they understood the concerns of the aldermen and they were willing to meet halfway, so to speak, and say, okay, we'll sort of waive what's in place right now with the code and policy if you agree to this particular amount. If you don't agree to that amount tonight, you revert back to the code and you give them the full amount that's there unless you want to come back and change city ordinance and change city policies. That's the extreme that you measure that you would have to, to take, okay? Chief Kirk, do you really want to talk or do you not? I'm trying to say you don't, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's on, Chief. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Common Council. I just, I just want to perhaps clarify what the issue is that we're discussing here today. I've been a non-rep over 10 years now. I wish others who were in some of our other meetings would be here tonight. I believe there was a comparison of salaries uh, of union people and non-reps, and with the longevity steps that are in the union contracts, those who become non-reps fall behind the one who makes more money in the union. What we're trying to do is there is a city ordinance that addresses the pay plan. I have offered my services to Alderman Gisha to work on this, to straighten it. What we're looking at is years ago we went away from the pay plan. We got a 1.7% one year. We gave it back to the city to pay for insurance. Some of the unions did and some of the unions did not. We did that year. We must remember that this, this is not necessarily a 6.8% pay increase because these pay increases take place at midpoint. So what that means, if you have someone, the, the pay range is between, say the pay range is 10,000 to 30,000, that pay increase 
occurs at the midpoint at $20,000. So those who are paid a higher salary get less of a pay increase than those who are on the lower portion of the salary. What we're trying to do is take care of, I believe, and I wasn't here when this was created, take care of the longevity steps that don't exist in our pay plan. We have highly qualified people who take these jobs. And I think what I, what, what I stressed this year was, please, it's, it's by ordinance right now. In the past, you have to take care of it. If you're not going to follow ordinance, rescind the ordinance or just follow it. What we're saying is this year, go ahead. We'll take a, a bonus. This will affect those who are younger or who plan on staying longer because that bonus will never appear on their salary. It's a bonus, and I think many of them deserve it. So with that, I think we just have to remember the pay, the pay ranges. It's at midpoint. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Chief. Okay, we are going to call the vote on resolution number 1933. Please call the roll. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. No. Ryan. Aye. Smith. Aye. Wangaman. No. Boren. No. Bauk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. No. Kittleson. Aye. Clyunas. Aye. Manny. Aye. And Meyer. Aye. Ten eyes, four noes. Motion carries. 1934, General Orders Number 790708 by Alderman Montemayor, Meyer, Gisha, Heidemann, and Verhasselt amending the code so as to delete office supervisor and administrative assistant slash confidential secretary and create administrative assistant slash office supervisor in the police department. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. We're combining two jobs. Correct. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. Fourteen ayes. Motion carries. 1935, General Ordinance Number 80708 by Alderman Montemayor, Meyer, Gisha, Heidemann, and Verhasselt amending the code so as to delete the current part-time senior citizen center supervisor and create a full-time senior citizen center supervisor. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. I see here it says that the salary, annual salary, remains the same at $41,000. It just moves from a part-time to a full-time position. Does this mean, then, that this employee becomes eligible for benefits? Alderman Montemayor. Alderman Ryan, yes. So in, in reality here, we're going from $41,000 and probably a $25,000 benefit package on here, which would bring it up to uh, oh, $66,000 from $41,000. So... I think that should just be uh, be noted. Thank you. Alderman Clayunas. I don't believe that's the case. This person is um, almost full time. Their their insurance and everything is prorated. They've been paying more on their insurance than uh, than the uh, full time person. So it, it's not that they're getting a, a new ride. They're, they've been getting benefits, but at a reduced. Um, rate and um, paying more for their insurance, they're getting the same insurance. So um, this person really, um, I believe, being on the uh, Senior Center Commission needs to be full time. Uh, the Senior Center is only open right now four days a week and because this person can't put any more hours in. And so by doing this, by adding the hours on this, the Senior Center, uh, she can work on Friday and actually do some of the work that she can't accomplish on the other four days because the Senior Center is very busy. She's been very successful in uh, working with the seniors to increase the traffic and activity at the center. And it's, it should be a full-time job. And it really will not cost the city as much as it, as it's, it sounds. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Gisha? No? OK. Alderman Ryan, second time. So what we're saying here, then, is this individual is already receiving insurance. Yes. 
so that there will not be a, a large benefits increase. No, correct. Okay. And I, I also believe that the uh, the senior citizen center is a uh, is is a, a duty of the city to uh, uh, for our senior citizens. So I will support it. Thank you. Thank you. There will be no more discussion. Please call the roll. Ryan. Aye. Smith. Aye. Longevin. Aye. Boren. Aye. Belk. Aye. Yesha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heideman. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. And Rinfleisch. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law 2061 will be referred to ethics board. Point. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On uh, 2061 and 2062, I, I have a, a question here. Um, this appears to me to be an open records request. Uh, if I may ask, uh, Madam City Clerk, is this normal procedure that we take open records requests and refer them to committees? Madam Has this been done in the past where somebody puts in basically what's an open records request? And, and we're referring it uh, in this case to the uh, to the ethics board. Is this normal procedure? Yes. I don't know if it's normal procedure or not, but an open records request would go directly to the person that has the records when we're dealing with the city. If I were to ha receive an open records request, for example, if I'm in um, custody of those records, then I'm the person that they would address. So is it normal? Perhaps not. Uh, I mean, these, these documents appear to be to me to be nothing more than uh, basically a witch hunt um, or even worse, an attempt to uh, slander the reputation of Alderman Hanna on this council. And I would like to make a motion at this time to file both of these documents. Second. Motion and second to file 2061 and 2062. I'm sorry, who did second that? Alderman? Okay. Under discussion. There be none. All in favor say aye. Aye. All, any, any, any opposed? Alderman Hanna is abstaining. Okay. Alderman Rinfleisch, we took the vote. Do you still want to say something? Okay. Motion carries. Both items are filed. Pardon me? Oh, your vote is no? Okay. Okay, hold on. Can hold we on. back up a bit? Hold on. Hold on. Please, please call the roll. Hold on. The vote, roll call is to file... 2061 and 2062. Please call the roll. Okay. okay. Smith. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Abstain. Heideman. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Kleinunis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. No. Montemayor. No. Rinfleisch. Aye. And Ryan. Ten eyes, one abstention, and three no's. Motion carries. 2063 resolution by Alderman Hanna, amending resolution number 720607, dated Ju July 17, 2006, to change the three business persons added to the City County Shared Services Committee from non voting to voting members. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would. <clears throat> I would move that the resolution be uh, put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. A little red lights coming up. Alderman Montemayor. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. I was glad to see this resolution by Alderman Hanna. I think they should be voting members. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess I also um, see it as a good thing. Uh, can I ask Alderman Hanna why he wants them to be voting members, just for his reasoning? Thank you. President Hanna. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll address you, Mayor. Um, they have been active participants and bring a depth and breadth of knowledge to lots of issues that we address. Um, and I think it is important that when citizens are willing to take time out of their busy lives to give to the citizens, we need to recognize that by giving them the ability to vote. Thank you. Any other questions? There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, other matters, before we uh, convene in closed session, I'd like for Attorney McLean to uh, do other matters. Attorney McLean. 2064, communication from Troy McLaughlin. 
stating that as a landscaper in the city, he's not allowed to take his customers' grass clippings to the drop-off site and finding it challenging for his customers. Would like to see something change. That will be referred to Public Works. 2065 is a claim from John and Amanda Escobar for alleged damages to their vehicle when a city snowplow hit their parked car with the blade. That will be referred to risk management. 2066 is a, an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2008 and June 30, 2009. That will go to law and licensing. 2067 is a communication from Steve Heinen regarding his concerns with piles of unbagged garbage at 2501 Calumet Boulevard and other buildings on both sides of the street in the 24 to 2600 block. That will be referred to Public Protection and Safety and Public Works. 2068 is an ordinance reestablishing the salaries of election officials. That will be referred to Salary and Grievances. 2069 is a claim from Karen Hopp for alleged damages to her vehicle when a city garbage truck backed into her vehicle while she was stopped at a stop sign. And that will go to risk management. Uh, before I ask, ask for a motion, uh, President Hanna, I'd like to just announce to the public that the council will now be going through closed session to, the class, to discuss closed session matters. At the time that we come back, we will not be on camera anymore. This will be the last uh, part of the, of, the, of the meeting today. Alderman Hanna, I would need a motion uh, as read. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in 19.851G of the Wisconsin Statutes for the pur purpose of conferring with legal counsel for the city who is rendering oral or written advice concerning a strategy to be adopted with respect to litigation in which it is or is likely to become involved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion on the motion to in closed session? There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 We take a roll take a call. call. I'm sorry. Let's roll call it. Uh, Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. And Smith? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. We, are, we will convene in closed session and ask everyone else to uh, excuse themselves.